Hi everyone, Laura from Nanny Parent Connection here. Today I'm going to talk about how to advocate for yourself as a nanny. I'm going to discuss eight real world scenarios that come up for nannies and how I recommend handling those situations. Scenario number one, wage for the position is too low for you. If the position seems like a great fit, I encourage nannies to apply anyway. Make sure to state your case as to why you are a great fit for the role and also why you would ask a higher rate. Explain what your years of nanny experience or your educational background has taught you. Convey your value and what you would bring to the table as a nanny for that family. Give some examples of things you might do with the child or for the family such as planning age-appropriate developmental activities, helping to establish or maintain structure, or how you will otherwise support the family. A great way to communicate these things to families is with a well-put-together resume and perhaps more importantly, a cover letter outlining what you would bring to the family. I do recommend being upfront about the rate you would ask for the position so that you're sure not to waste anyone's time, yours or the family's, if that rate is not inside of the family's budget. If a family is not offering a high enough wage, they will of course see that in the experience or quality of the nanny applicants for that position. If you present yourself as a stellar nanny candidate and can back up those claims, any family who is able to meet your pay expectations will likely do so in order to partner with a fantastic, qualified nanny. Scenario number two, asking for a raise. This can be a really nerve wracking process for nannies because they often aren't sure how to initiate that conversation. A great way to do this, especially if you are near the one year mark in your contract with your family, is to ask for an annual review. If the cost of living has changed dramatically, such as it has in 2022, and you have been with your family for less than a year, a review is an opportunity to sit down with your nanny family and to provide and invite feedback on how things are going and what, if anything, could be done differently to improve the working relationship. When asking for a raise, I do recommend doing some research on cost of living increases for that particular year. Providing your family with some real numbers is helpful because you can base your requested raise on those figures. Make sure you're also prepared to discuss the value that you bring to your nanny family. If you go out of your way and go above and beyond the required job duties, make sure to bring that up as well. Another great topic to frame into an ask for a raise is how you plan to approach and support upcoming developmental milestones for your nanny child. The keys to this conversation are to be professional, proactive, and to provide concrete examples. Putting together an outline for this conversation can ensure that you will cover all of the points that you would like to cover. Scenario number three, job offer counter offer. If you receive a job offer from a nanny family, but it falls short of your expectations for compensation, don't just decline the offer and walk away from the position. If it seems like a really good fit, make a counter offer. They obviously really like you and would love for you to be their nanny. Respond back to them with what you would ask for or require from them in order to accept the position. Remind them of your fantastic experience, your educational background, and the value that you would bring to their family as their nanny. The worst that can happen is that they will say no. And ideally, they will either accept your counter offer or they will counter your counter offer with something that meets in the middle for everyone. Just remember, that first job offer is typically not the final word if it does not work for you. Scenario number four, not getting mileage reimbursement. Reimbursing a nanny for miles driven in their own car on the job is considered a nanny industry standard. Nannies, if you are not getting reimbursed for mileage driven in your own vehicle on the job, you are bringing home less take home pay than you would be if you are getting compensated for miles driven. With the cost of operating a vehicle, not to mention the recent spike in gas prices, this can really add up. The best time to ask for and discuss mileage reimbursement, of course, is before you accept a position or when you are negotiating the contract with your nanny family. However, if you've been working with a nanny family and you are not getting reimbursed for miles driven, don't be shy about advocating for yourself and asking for this. You can highlight the fact that it's considered a nanny industry standard. If you weren't aware of that before, you could say, I wasn't aware this was an industry standard, but I would really like to ask for mileage reimbursement for miles driven. Let your family know you can easily track miles driven on the job with an app and submit that to them at the end of each week or every two weeks for a simple reimbursement. The fantastic app for tracking miles is one such as Mile IQ. Scenario number five, not getting or being offered a nanny industry standard compensation package. Now more than ever, it is a nanny's market. Nannies, this means the ball is in your court. If a family is not offering you a nanny industry standard compensation package, including guaranteed hours, paid time off, paid holidays, mileage reimbursement, 
and accrued paid sick time, some families truly just do not know that this is a nanny industry standard. Be honest and upfront about what it is that you are looking for in your compensation package. And remember, just because a family isn't offering it, that doesn't mean you can't ask for, advocate for yourself, and get a nanny industry standard compensation package. Scenario number six, push back on paid time off or taking sick time. This is unfortunately a scenario that I hear happens a lot more than we would all think. If your employer is giving you pushback on paid time off or paid sick time, please be professional but firm about your request. Of course, try to give as much advance notice as possible for any paid time off. If you wanna go above and beyond, you can network with your local nanny community in order to help your family find coverage if they need it. However, this is not required. It does fall on your employer to find coverage if their nanny is out. Importantly, make sure you agree to the paid time off and paid sick policy listed in the contract before signing that contract. If you don't agree with the language in that contract, discuss this with your employer to try to work something out that is agreeable and fair to everyone. Scenario number seven, not having a nanny contract. I sometimes hear from nannies, and from families for that matter, that they don't use or prefer not to use a nanny contract. Not using a nanny contract seems like a red flag to me. A nanny contract is simply a working agreement between all parties. It describes how the employer will hire you. It also outlines all of the parameters of the position, including how and when pay happens. If ever there's a dispute about how paid time off happens, for example, you can just go back and reference the contract to find out the path forward. A contract holds all parties accountable, and I don't recommend working without one. If you have been working without a nanny contract, it's never too late to start. Speak with your employer and tell them you would prefer to work with a contract in place to ensure that everyone is on the same page. Nanny Parent Connection has a fantastic nanny contract available on the website if you need that resource. Scenario number eight, job duty creep. This is a common problem I hear about often from nannies. Job duty creep is where additional job duties have been piled on one by one, or perhaps you have gone above and beyond and out of your way in order to do some extra responsibilities that are now expected of you at your nanny job. The problem? These job duties were not originally discussed and agreed upon when you accepted the position with the family. If you are experiencing job duty creep, sit down and have a conversation with your employer. If you are happy to help out with these additional job duties, let your employer know. While you're at it, you can also ask your employer if there are any other job duties around the house that you may be able to help with. Evaluate if those additional job duties and responsibility would merit a wage increase for you and ask your employer for what you think is appropriate. These additional job duties then will need to be added to the contract and the pay rate, if it's changing, will need to be changed appropriately. If the additional job duties are not added to your contract, you will at least come to an agreement with your employer that you are no longer responsible for these duties. Nannies, if you will be launching a job search soon, make sure to check out this video on how to write an amazing nanny resume. For those of you who are already working with a family and would like some ideas on how to initiate and hold a review with your family, please check out my annual review video tutorial for nannies. All right, everyone, thank you so much for joining me to learn more about how to advocate for yourself as a nanny. I hope you found this video helpful. If you like this video, please click the like button, ring the bell, or subscribe so that you can be alerted when more of these videos come out in the future. Thanks everyone, bye.